In this video, we outline an extension of our work on graph-based exploration path planning with improvements enabling ground robots to handle challenging terrain, as well as improved computational performance. The new method is called GB Planner 2, following the naming of our previous contribution called GB Planner. The planner maintains the local and global planner architecture, as in the previous method. In the local planning step, the planner first identifies the local bounds of space for exploration based on the local geometry of the environment. It extracts a sparse point cloud of the local subset of the mapped environment exploiting the underlying volumetric representation. Subsequently, principal component analysis is performed on this point cloud. The derived eigenvectors are scaled by a constant factor to calculate the dimensions of the bounding box. Its orientation is set to be along the principal components. Using this method, the planner can handle diverse geometries within complex and large-scale environments. Once the bounding box is derived, the planner then samples points in the free space inside the local bounding box. These points are connected by collision-free edges to form an undirected 3D graph. Specifically for ground robots, the planning procedure involves an additional step to ensure that the graph built is traversable. This, among others, involves the verification that there exists ground under the robot to support its motion. However, the volumetric map can have gaps, especially on voxels of the terrain. Hence, not only a single but a set of rays are cast around the sampled point to optimistically verify the presence of ground. For the ground robot to traverse inclined positive or negative slopes, the graph must be built along the slope and must consider the robot's limitations on maximum allowed inclination. An edge in the graph is considered to be admissible, if it is collision-free and its inclination is within the robot's limits. For flying robots, only collision checking takes place. To check these conditions, the edge is subsampled and each point is projected downwards. If all the segments of the projected edge are collision-free and within the inclination limits, the edge is considered to be admissible and added to the graph. Importantly, in the presence of negative slopes, part of the slope is not visible to the robot. In such a scenario, only the edges whose both the end vertices have ground below them are projected as described before. The vertices that are in free space but don't have a mapped ground below them and can be connected to the graph using edges within the inclination limits are called hanging vertices. These vertices are used for volumetric gain evaluation but the edges connected to them are not commanded to the robot to traverse. In this figure the magenta-colored vertices are the hanging vertices. The volumetric gain associated with these vertices is also weighted to reduce its effect. Once the graph is built, Dijkstra shortest paths are calculated from the robot's location. A volumetric gain is then calculated for the vertices in the graph. If desired to reduce the computational load, the gain may be calculated only at the leaf vertices derived from the Dijkstra paths. This option may reduce the exploratory quality of the paths and is only used for computationally constrained systems such as micro-flying robots. To further speed up this process, the leaf vertices may be clustered. The volumetric gain is then calculated only for one vertex in each cluster and assigned to the other vertices. Eventually, the path having the highest exploration gain is selected further refined for safety, and executed by the robot. As mentioned, a bifurcated approach is employed to best handle large-scale environments. The global planner of the method is responsible for repositioning the robot to frontiers of explored space when local exploration is exhausted, as well as for bringing the robot back to its home location upon reaching the endurance limit. The global planner maintains a sparse graph built from the high exploration gain paths of the local graph as well as sparsely sampled robot poses. Vertices in this graph that have high volumetric gain are marked as frontier vertices. When local exploration is exhausted, the planner repositions the robot to a new frontier using the global graph. The frontier selection takes place considering its volumetric gain, distance from the current location, and distance to the home location. The robot continues local exploration upon reaching the frontier. It may move to another frontier if local exploration is again exhausted. When the robot approaches its endurance limit, a homing path is commanded to return the robot to the home location.